All right, good afternoon. Uh, I will start off with a quick note on the Central African Republic. You will have seen uh, that yesterday afternoon we issued a statement from the Secretary General in which he took uh, note of the final results of the first round of le the legislative elections as proclaimed by the Constitutional Court earlier in the week. He also said he remained very concerned about the armed clashes and threats to civilians in the country and strongly condemned the violence and reiterated his call for a global ceasefire. He urges all parties to halt immediately hostilities. The perpetrators of grave violations of human rights and international humanitarian law, as well as serious crimes, including killing of civilians and UN peacekeepers, must be held to account, he said. Um, we will hear a lot more on the Central African Republic after uh, this briefing when we're joined by Denise Brown, the Deputy Special Representative of the Secretary General and Deputy Head of the UN Peacekeeping Mission in the Central African Republic. Uh, she's uh, logged in and will join us live from Bangui. Um, the Secretary General earlier today uh, discussed the challenges over the coming years for Israelis and Palestinians in remarks to the Committee on the Exercise of the Inalienable Rights of the Palestinian People. He said that the pandemic has had a severe impact on the Palestinians, particularly in Gaza, the UN and its partners are supporting the Palestinian government's work to control the spread of the pandemic. The Secretary General added that the Special Coordinator continues to encourage Israel to support the COVID-19 vaccine availability, which is in line with Israel's obligation under international law. Mr. Guterres said that, the, that President Mahmoud Abbas's call for an international co peace conference under the auspices of the United Nations and an expanded quartet meeting provides a positive opportunity to advance peace in the region. He also called on the parties to refrain from unilateral acts that can jeopardize the possibility of restarting the peace process. That event took place in person in the Hall of the General Assembly. Moving on to the Deputy Secretary General, Amina Mohammed, who spoke by video message to the Global Engagement and Empowerment Forum on Sustainable Development today. She stressed that to ensure that societies rebuild a sustainable and resilient manner, our collective response and recovery efforts must be rooted in the 2030 agenda of the 17 Sustainable Development Goals, adding that we need more targeted assistance to the furthest behind who are most vulnerable and have the least resilience. Ms. Mohammed also said that we must uh, act multilaterally to mobilize more development assistance and socially conscious investments and enhance our social protection systems. Her remarks are online. And I want to flag that tomorrow morning, uh, Mina Mohammed will join Grassa Michel at the virtual global intergenerational dialogue. Uh, they will join an international panel of young leaders in an event designed to give them a voice and to establish dialogue with current leaders. Uh, Grassa Michel, as you know, is a member of the Sustainable Development Goals Advocacy Group, also the chair of Global Peace, an initiative of the African Center for Constructive Resolution of Dispute launched by South African President Cyril Ramaphosa in 2018. That will be live on the interweb. Moving on to Ethiopia, where uh, the situation in Tigray is dire, with hundreds of thousands of people still not receiving aid. Economic activity, Electricity, communications, and basic services remain largely disrupted, especially in rural areas where two-thirds of the population lives. Bank remains closed, except in uh, the capital of Tigray, Mekele. This hinders aid organizations and others from providing basic services. It's been reported that there's a lack of food in markets due to fighting having broken out in during harvest season, which left crops unharvested. Even before the conflict, malnutrition was already on the rise because of the pandemic and desert locusts. The World Health Organization believes that nearly 80% of the hospitals remain uh, unfunctional. Some 1.3 million children have been out of school since the beginning of the conflict. Many schools are now sheltering internally displaced people, and there are reports of children having been separated from families as well as forced recruitment and serious allegations of sexual and gender-based violence. 
the continuing conflict and administrative bureaucracy still making it difficult to scale up humanitarian assistance. We continue to call for full, immediate, safe, and unimpeded humanitarian access to provide urgent assistance and protection to those in need. We are encouraged that recent high-level visits have resulted in productive exchanges with Ethiopian authorities who understand the potential um, who understand the potential uh, for greater uh, risk. Um, and from uh, South Sudan, I can tell you the Secretary General Special Representative David Shearer said that today political parties must speed up efforts to finalize the Constitution so that elections can take place. They must also form state and county institutions and reconst reconstitute the national legislature. Mr. Shearer said that positive progress had been made by political parties in the past year. He pointed to the formation of the transitional government and other developments, but he stressed that the pace of implementing the 2018 peace deal has been too slow. This, this has heightened doubt and frustration. Mr. Shearer says he fears that the slow pace of reform ha as set out in the peace agreement will deteriorate further, pointing to increased violence in places such as Warup, Chonj, and Jongle. And the UN mission in Libya welcomed the convening of the seventh round of the 5.5 plus 5 Joint Military Commission, at, at, which take place in Sirt from the 4th to 7th of February. The session is intended to continue the planning for the implementation of the ceasefire agreement that was signed on October 23rd in Geneva. Uh, and the meeting will also focus on expediting the opening of the coastal road to enable safe passage of citizens and goods, building on progress achieved in previous rounds. Demining experts from both sides, in addition to UNSMIL staff, will attend the meeting to provide technical support and discuss the way forward to clear minds and remnants of war in areas under the control of each party. The, JMC will also finalize discussions with the UN mission on the necessary requirements for deployment of UN monitors in support of the ceasefire monitoring and verification mechanism. I wanted to flag that uh, the Deputy Special Coordinator for Lebanon, Najat Roshdi, expressed her shock and sadness over the assassination of Lebanese activist Lokman Sim, Slim. Ms. Roshdi extended her deep condolences to Mr. Slim's family and friends and voiced solidarity with the Lebanese people. She said that the killing of courageous and engaged intellectual is a loss to all Lebanese people, and she called for a thorough, quick, and transparent investigation and judicial process to bring all those responsible for this outrageous act to justice. Uh, Mr. Kubish, the departing special coordinator, added in a tweet that you can kill a journalist, but you cannot kill his or her message. You can muzzle the media, but you cannot silence the truth. Also, today um, marks the six months since the Beirut explosions that left nearly 200 dead and some 6,500 injured. The UN and our humanitarian partners have provided immediate, humani have provided immediate humanitarian assistance to at least 300,000 people since the beginning of the response. And today, our thoughts go to all the victims uh, of this uh, blast as well as all the families that were impacted, including a number of our own uh, UN friends and colleagues. Uh, turning to Peru, I want to flag that our team there has helped the government secure the country on the initial phase of delivery of the COVID-19 vaccine through the COVAX facility, led by the resident coordinator, Igor Garofulic, and the World Health Organization. The UN has worked with authorities to fulfill the COVAX requirements to receive and deploy vaccines targeting healthcare workers and other key vulnerable groups. These requirements include a national vaccination plan, target vaccination groups, and the purchase of equipment to preserve and ensure the efficacy, efficacy of the vaccine. Uh, the UN Children's Fund also helped the government to buy cold chain equipment. Peru is expected to receive an initial shipment of over 1.7 million doses of the vaccine in the next few weeks. I want to flag a story that we thought was kind of neat. Uh, the World Food Program, with support from the United Kingdom, is stepping up a global cooperation on the use of humanitarian drones. With low operating costs and rapid deployment, even in difficult weather conditions, drones can be a game changer for fast, accurate disaster impact assessment and response. However, WFP says that the responsible use of drone technology in humanitarian work requires careful evaluation, cooperation, and protocols that focus as much on data protection and public trust as on aviation safety. 
to ramp up engagement with leading public, uh, private, and ac academic experts. WFP has launched a web platform at drones. Let's try it again. At drones.wfp.org to facilitate the safe and ethical use of this technology. Uh, more information on the website. And today, our, friend, our other friends in Rome at the FAO uh, said that the global food price rose. I don't know what's going on with me today. They said that global food prices rose in January for the eighth consecutive month. This was led by cereals, vegetable oils, and sugar. The food price index saw a 4.3% increase from December to 2020, reaching its highest level since July of 2014. Um, today is World Cancer Day with the theme, I Can and I Will. According to WHO, in the past two decades, the overall number of people diagnosed with cancer nearly doubled an estimated 10 million in 2000 to 19.3 million in 2020. Today, one in five people worldwide will develop cancer during their lifetime. WHO notes that COVID-19 pandemic has increased the problem of late stage diagnosis and lack of access to treatment. These occurs everywhere, but particularly in low and middle income countries. In addition to having to cope with the disruption of services, people living with cancer are also at higher risk of severe COVID-19 illness and death. 1 p.m. right here today, uh, after we're done with Denise Brown, Ambassador Barbara Woodward of the UK, President of the Council, will read out a press statement on Myanmar. That will be at the stakeout. And finally, we are grateful today to our friends in Baku and Podoritsa, which, uh, who've paid a budget dues in full, uh, on a roll up to 30. Capitals of which country? James? Baku and Pod Podoritsa. One of them is Montenegro. What was the other one? Baku, Baku. is uh, Azerbaijan. Okay, there you go. <laughs> so I can get a question. Yes, right? you may. <laughs> Fine. Okay. Not that you never get one. Baku is Montenegro. <laughs> yes, that's what he said. Don't worry. <laughs> Here, what the other one was. Um, anyway, um, uh, yes. yes. So the Security Council has now come up with a statement on Myanmar and they are expressing deep concern, they are calling for immediate release of those detained, and they are emphasising the need for uh, the continued support for the democratic transition, exactly echoing what the Secretary-General has been calling for. Um, what is the Secretary-General's response to the fact that now the Security Council has come on the same page? I think it's very welcome uh, that relatively quickly uh, the Council came together to speak with one voice, which is, as you said, exactly what we had asked for. And a question on Yemen. The National Security Advisor of the United States has announced that the US is going to end all military support for offensive operations by the Saudi-led coalition. Uh, does the UN think that this potentially gives more space to diplomacy and the work of uh, Special Envoy Martin Griffiths? Look, I, I haven't seen the exact wording of the announcement, but what I will say is I think that any move that reduces uh, the number of weapons, the military activity, and gives uh, is to be welcomed, uh, and will give more space, as you say, and more hope, uh, most not only to the talks, but more importantly, more hope to the people of Yemen. I have some Libya questions. Okay, later. we'll come back, uh, Ray, and then Celia. Thank you, uh, Stefan. Um, there has been information that the Security Council instructed the Secretary General to deploy ceasefire uh, monitors to Libya as soon as possible. My question is, uh, when is this going to happen? And the other question is, uh, where will they be how will they be dealing with the issue of foreign uh, fighters? Thank you. Well, you know, on the issue of foreign uh, fighters, we have called... Uh for a ban on foreign fighters, we've called, and there's a, there's a, the relevant Security Council resolutions on that. I think the Secretary General has been very clear uh, on the need for those countries who have interests in Libya uh, to support the Libyans, not with more weapons or more men with guns, but with support for the political and the peace process. Uh, the issue of the monitors is being discussed, as I mentioned, in the 5 plus 5 uh, committee meetings that are ongoing. Celia. The situation in Bangui is catastrophic. Um, what are the Russian and Wallen troops 
doing to well, restore I, the security it's situation? It's a very valid question. I see Denise Brown already on my screen. Uh, I would ask you to ask her since she's in Bangui la Coquette and I'm here in Manhattan, so she will know more uh, and provide better answers. Uh, James Reinel. Hi, Stefan. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Great stuff. Um, I've got a couple of questions. First one is, um, does the UN have any comment on the sentencing for 20 years of an Iranian diplomat over in Brussels today, um, sorry, in Belgium, over um, an attempt to uh, launch a bomb attack on a meeting of an anti-government Iranian group in Europe? Look, I I haven't seen the report of that, so let me let me look at it, and I will uh, I will get back to you. Um, okay, I've got a I've got a second one, if that's okay. That is okay. Yeah, it's back on the Safa oil tanker, the one that you guys mm -hmm. are trying to get access to. Um, the government of Yemen, that's the uh, the Hardy government, um, has today made a statement, and they say that it's time now for the Security Council to take finding and deterrent measures against the Houthis to prevent the greatest environmental and humanitarian disaster in the region of the world. Um, does the UN Secretary General, Mr. Guterres, does he agree? Is it time for the Security Council to act on this? Look, the Security Council is master of its own activities. Uh, I think there is quite a number of uh, resolutions of the Security Council on Yemen, uh, including that mentioned the Safar oil tanker. So I think the, the, the wish of the Council has been clear. The wish of the international community is clear. Uh, our wish is to be able to move forward constructively uh, with the repairs uh, and the mitigation measures that are needed on this tanker to avoid a catastrophe that will impact Yemenis regardless of where their allegiances are, and that will impact the region. Mm. But, I mean, it's the, it's the way that you get there is the important thing. And do you want to well, keep on waiting for we, the Houthis we, to give you the you know, we, we, or do you or, or, or do you think you need to go another route now? Well, I mean, we're going to need to get there by sea, no matter what the resolutions are, what the statements are. That's the way we get there. We're very much, fo on our end, we're focused on the practical. It would be good for the international community to do whatever they can to support our practical efforts. Um, Beitoul. Thank you, Steph. I've got two questions. Yeah. First of all, does the Secretary General have any reaction to the systematic rape and sexual harassment allegation by the Uyghurs in China's re-education camps? I did ask, but couldn't get a response yesterday. And also, the SG also talked about mobilizing all actors and international community uh, to make sure that the military coup in Myanmar fails. How does the plan to move forward. Thank you. Um, on Myanmar, I think the, the, the statement issued by the Security Council unanimously, I think, sends a very strong uh, signal uh, and includes the Permanent Five and, uh, and obviously the other, the elected ten. I think that in itself st sends a strong statement. Our envoy and various others at the, the um, uh, in the Secretariat, including the Secretary General, will continue uh, to have contacts with various parties on this issue, I think all with the same aim. Um, on the, uh, this BBC uh, report, I think, you know, taking into, into account the, the nature of the allegations in the report and, and the denial by the authorities of these, uh, these allegations, I think it's, it's more important now than ever uh, for the proposed mission of the High Commissioner for Human Rights uh, to go forward. Okay, uh, I will go to, sorry, uh, uh, Errol, go ahead, and then Abdel Hamid and Sylvian. Errol? Just two questions. First of all, uh, we forgot to ask, probably I did forget. Uh, how the Secretary General is feeling after the first uh, shot of vaccine? Did he have any side effects or so? No, he's, I keep asking him. He's doing well. I mean, he's not doing cartwheels, because I, I told you before he doesn't do cartwheels. Uh, but he's feeling very good. He had no side effects. And uh, he's looking forward uh, to getting the second jab uh, whenever he gets the appointment uh, through the New York City authorities. But thank you for okay, asking. Another one? 
Thank you. Uh, another one on Myanmar. Uh, how the Secretary General now feels with this statement by Security Council and his own, uh, this situation will affect worse than, uh, obviously, the situation for uh, Rohingya uh, refugees. Uh, of course. In, I mean, I region. think, as I said, it, we very much welcome the statement by the Security Council. Uh, but now we need to, we're, we're also looking for movement on the ground, right? For people to be released, uh, for the voices, the, demo, the voices of the people of Myanmar as expressed through a democratic process to be listened to. So now we're focused on what will happen on the ground. And of course, uh, it, will have a, uh, it will have an impact on Rohingya refugees everywhere, but it will have an impact on, on the people. It has an impact on the people of Myanmar. Okay, um, what did I say? Abdel Hamid and then Silvian. Thank you, Stefan. I have two questions. Uh, this morning, IDF erased to the ground the, for a second time in a week the small village, Palestinian village called Homsa, that's H U M S A, in the occupied Jordanian Valley, in the northern part of the Jordanian Valley. A delegation of the European Union accredited Palestinian Authority had visited the village. And it was also destroyed in November. So, is there any statement other than the general, you know, position? I, I, I haven't the seen. I will. Uh, we will ask the nine families. We will ask the special coordinator's uh, office. And your second question? Yeah. My second question about Kosovo, which is not a recognized state, uh, recognized state at the UN. It had decided to establish relations with Israel and to establish an embassy in Jerusalem, which is in violation of Resolution 478, as you know. Any position on that? Well, the, the, the status of Re Jerusalem, as we've always said, is, a, is part of the final status discussion issues. Um, we, we don't comment on you know, on uh, bilateral relations that are uh, that that are established, um, it's our focus is on the membership. You know, on issues regarding membership of the UN. So I have no con I have no comment on the first part of your question, uh, Silvian, and then Maria, and then uh, Nabil. Uh, thank you, Stefan. Uh, it's about the assassination of Flockman Smith. He was a journalist, a vocal critic of Hezbollah. The family just called for an international investigation. Is there any chance that this investigation takes place? Look, uh, as you know, uh, whether or not to create an international investigation is up to uh, member states uh, to call for one officially, to put one in place through various uh, procedures. What is important for us right now, and the primary responsibility lies with the authorities in Lebanon, is that a thorough, transparent uh, investigation be uh, conducted, and as Najat Roshdi said, also a, a, an efficient judicial process. Uh, Maria and then Nabil. Hi, Steph. Uh, I have a question about uh, the decision of Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky to ban uh, the broadcasting of three channels, uh, three opposition channels. Uh, so I wonder if SG consider it to violate the freedom of speech in Ukraine. Look, as a matter of principle, we are for uh, freedom of expression. We are for uh, free media uh, all around the world. Um, Nabil, and then we'll go to Toby and Ibtissam. Thank you. Uh, two questions, please, uh, Stefan. Now that the Security Council uh, has issued the statement on Myanmar, uh, what's the first uh, step or uh, first action the Secretary General is planning to take on this uh, matter? And I have another question on another I, bo issue. Bo both he and his contact and his special representative, his special, excuse me, both the Secretary General and the Special Envoy uh, will continue their, their contacts and efforts to reach people um, who can move, help move the situation forward in a positive manner. Your second question? And on the assassination of the uh, Lebanese journalist, 
Uh, what was your position? Sorry, I missed the beginning of your uh, answer to Sylvia's question. What's your position and what do you call exactly the, the Lebanese authorities to do? Well, the Leb it is the Lebanese government, as any government is responsible uh, to uh, investigate uh, crimes and murders in their own jurisdiction. So the primary responsibility, as it would be anywhere, is on, is on the government of Lebanon to, to investigate. Sylvian had asked about an international investigation. Those things need to be either requested officially by the member state where crime took place or be set up uh, by a relevant UN body. But it is not within the prerogative of the Secretary General to establish one on his own. Uh, Did you condemn uh, the assassination? Sorry, I was. Yes, our representatives on the ground condemned it, and of course, the Secretary General fully supports them in that. Uh, Ibtissam and then Toby. Thanks, Steph. Uh, my question is about uh, Myanmar. So, uh, do you have a team on the ground? What are they exactly telling you? And then, is the UN envoy still in Europe? Uh, Yes. And um, yeah. and the last part is, um, are you able to access the areas of the Rohingyas, whether uh, displaced or uh, in their, the areas where they're living? Thank you. Um, we have uh, about 2,300 staff in Myanmar, uh, both international and national. It's a, it's a pretty large country uh, presence. I mean, as you know, we'd been involved in all sorts of programs from peace consolidation to health to COVID uh, to human rights. Uh, obviously, I mean, these are the first few days uh, after what we, the events that we saw. Uh, the, the, the activities are not continuing as normal. Um, I think our colleagues on the ground are trying to uh, Re-establish some of the programs, see what is what is possible. I think in trying to assess uh, the situation, we remain very concerned about uh, the situation of all people in Myanmar: the human rights situation, the lack of freedom of expression, or the shutting down of some uh, internet platforms. Uh, <clears throat> access has always been a challenge in uh, different parts of Myanmar, including in Rakhine State, and the, the, these latest developments have not helped that in any way. Um, uh, could go I ahead. Have a follow up? Yeah. Um, how worried are you that, um, especially in the Rohingya state, that there will be um, another massacres or ethnic cleansing the, or something similar to the, what happened in the last years? These are issues. These are issues at the forefront of our concern, and we will continue our advocacy. Uh, for the Rohingyas and all the, frankly, all the people of, of Myanmar. Okay, uh, uh, Toby, and then I'll go to Dulce here in the room. Hi, thanks, Steph. You you just mentioned this very briefly in your last comment, but specifically, uh, I think the the Ministry of um, Transportation and Communications singled out. Facebook specifically as a, the, the object of a temporary shutdown. What can you? What's the UN's position on this specifically among uh, you know, internet media crackdowns? Uh, the internet is a global. I mean, it is a tool for communications throughout the world now. And I think shutting down the internet, shutting down certain platforms with the aim of stopping people from communicating uh, is, is something that uh, we obviously do not support and something that concerns us, uh, that concerns us uh, very much. We will continue uh, with our partners uh, to see how, um, how we can continue our, our humanitarian programs, our development programs, but it's still very much early days. Uh, Dulce. I just wanted to clarify Jane Hall Lutz's uh, role at the UN. So she's uh, the special envoy for Cyprus, correct? She's the special coordinator for uh, sexual uh, exploitation and abuse, and she's also a secretary general's uh, envoy uh, on uh, issues of Cyprus. So she's paid for both roles? No, she's paid when actually, uh, when actually employed. For both roles? 
For both, yes, she has two portfolios. Okay, so uh, some people are wondering uh, what she has done recently on the uh, SEA uh, coordinator job. Well, I mean, I think if you see uh, the improvements in the UN system on how uh, we are dealing with sexual uh, exploitation abuse in getting the partners on board, getting the agencies on board, getting the reporting mechanisms uh, strengthened, uh, the tr increased transparency that we have seen, frankly, over the last uh, three, four years on this. That is her work and the work of, uh, of, Jane, of Jane Connors. She also remains in touch with, uh, with member states who are obviously a key partner on this. Okay, so you're saying she still uh, actively has this job? Completely. Pardon? Completely. I mean, she's okay. completely work, actively working on that. I know she just briefed the Secretary General on it uh, yesterday. Uh, on what? On SCA. sexual exploitation. Abuse. So will we get information about that briefing? Well, I mean, she was just updating the Secretary General. The, the information you get is through the regular, uh, the regular um, updates that are published Every day, if you look at the website, uh, every day they're updated, and we have the yearly uh, the yearly report, and we also have quarterly reports. Okay, thanks. Okay, um, Stefano. Sorry, Steph, and can I just have one follow up on the Facebook question, which was yeah. the, uh, the given the importance of that specific platform in the country, which many people say is basically the same thing as the internet in Myanmar. How, does the UN use? Uh, that platform, Facebook, in any of its official duties? Yeah, I mean, we, we, we use it to communicate. I mean, like you do or like anybody else does. Okay, uh, Stefano and then Benno. Thank you, Stefan. Uh, this is about the work of the Security Council, and the specific about Myanmar, but in general. I mean, just, I guess, we all received um, a comment by the spokesperson of the permanent mission of China, where he seems, or the mission of China seems shocked that um, there were leaks uh, during the work of the Security Council. And uh, for China, this uh, kind of uh, made that the, the press statement and the, and the work of the Security Council uh, more complicated, more um, difficult to achieve. So um, I will, my question is, what does the, sec the Secretary General think? First, if, uh, if uh, about the, the fact that this meeting was a closed door meeting when in Myanmar people were, you know, the situation was very um, difficult. So if, it, if, if I agree that this kind of situation uh, did help the fact that the Security Council, uh, the, the meeting are in closed door. And in the specific, if he thinks that actually when uh, leaks or when the media is in form of uh, anything or what's going on, this makes the work of the Security Council more difficult. Do you want me to say if I like leaks or not? Listen, well, everybody, you know, you, you guys, you, listen, listen, I, I mean, not. you guys do your job, uh, I do my job. Uh, and somewhere in the middle we meet through official statements and leaks. Uh, I mean, I, I have no comment on, you know, member states are free to, and or should be able to encourage, to be able to express themselves freely. Um, you know, whether leaks are good or bad, uh, I will let, leave that for a panel discussion at a school for journalists. Um, okay, uh, Benno, uh, Benno, and then we'll go to James and then Maria. Yes, hi, Steph, hi, dear colleagues. Um, I signed in late today, so I hope I, you didn't talk about this before. The Security Council just today gave green light to the new observer mission in Libya. Um, what will happen now? When will observers fly to Libya? Is it already decided who is actually going to be in the team? How big will it be? What is the time frame the SG is aiming for? Uh, when will the observers be ready to start working? Um, that will be one of the topic of discussions at the joint uh, 5 plus 5 meeting uh, that's taking place in Seert, which I just, uh, I just flag. Uh, 
And in terms, you know, in more details, I'll be honest with you, I'm not uh, briefed as I should be on this issue, and I will do my homework uh, on it. Uh, James uh, and Benno. Uh, James and then Maria. Um, yes, yeah, so um, first, follow up on that. You're not briefed on it, so I'm not sure you'll have the answer. But I was going to ask you more about the monitoring mission. I, I'd heard that it was not much more than a dozen initially um, UN monitors. Is, do, is that about the right lev level? And how difficult, given that you're also staffing a monitoring mission in Hodeida, um, and uh, potentially that is supposed to extend to other parts of Yemen. How difficult it is, is it recruiting these no, monitors? And which part of the... Is this peacekeeping does this on behalf of the UN? Who finds it's, these monitoring uh, people? You know, it's done... The, the recruitment uh, is done through our operational support with input from political affairs and peacekeeping. You know, the, the recruitment, uh, I don't think it's something that we're too concerned with because there are enough... Um, people globally with that kind of expertise, military, police, civil authorities that can be uh, that can be deployed. Uh, and I need to get more details on this, I'll be honest with you. OK, I've got two more questions. One more on Libya. Um, in addition to what's going on in CERT, you have the big talks going mm -hmm. on in Geneva. Mm -hmm. Am I right in thinking that if all things are hopeful uh, and go as the UN hopes anyway, that Stephanie Williams may be in a position to announce the names of a new Libyan government in the next 24 hours? I don't know if I want to be boxed into 24 hours, uh, but we do hope uh, soonish. So on that, could we please, um, before my last question, could we please um, have, I mean, I think this probably potentially could be a very big day yeah, for they, Libya. Could we have some media arrangements, yeah. some media guidelines of timings? Yeah. Could we have access to Stephanie Williams, given this is probably yeah. the last thing she's done, and it could be a great achievement in her a, career? It's not, not a small thing. No, exactly. Um, Thanks. A uh, last question, different subject. Bangladesh, an Al Jazeera investigative report about corruption in the Bangladesh military. The military claiming the spy equipment they're shown buying is for UN peacekeeping operations. Your comment? Um, yes, on that, uh, let, me, um, let me just tell you because... Uh, I have something to tell you, actually. Um, that in, uh, I can tell you that we are, in fact, aware of the reporting done by Al Jazeera investigations concerning allegations of corruption against senior officials in Bangladesh. Uh, and the press release issued by the Ministry of Defense in Bangladesh, the allegations of corruption is a serious matter that should be investigated by the relevant authorities. Bangladesh is the largest contributor of uniformed personnel to UN peacekeeping operations. The deployment of such personnel is pursuant to specific requirements from the UN that are reflected in the agreements with Bangladesh for each peacekeeping operations that they contribute uh, to. The UN has not identified in any of these agreements a requirement for the capability provided by the operation of electronic equipment in the nature described uh, by Al Jazeera in its documentary. And such equipment has not been deployed with Bangladeshi contingents in UN peacekeeping operations. Um, we have required in one peacekeeping operation in line with um, the relevant uh, UN intelligence peacekeeping policy, the capability of intercept certain types of communications as a measure to enhance security of UN personnel in situations where security conditions warrant its use. This capability is employed strictly in accordance with UN peacekeeping intelligence policy and under the operational authority of the force uh, commander. Okay, Maria, one last question, and then Denise has been extremely patient uh, in Bangui, and we'll turn to her. Uh, Maria. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, you uh, just said in principle that United Nations support the freedom of speech, and I never doubted it, actually. But um, in particular about uh, the situation in Ukraine, the, where opposition channels can't broadcast now and at least for five years. Um, has SG something to say? Is he concerned about this situation? Look, uh, I, I haven't been following the specific situation. Uh, but what I can tell you is that, uh, you know, it, for any uh, 
healthy democracy, there needs to be enough space uh, to hear various voices, whether they're for the government or against uh, the government. And that's the kind of environment we would like to see everywhere.